Thank you very much for that warm introduction. I appreciate that. Um, I promise no more chemistry jokes, but if I finish early, I do have a quantum physics joke uh, for those of you who actually took college-level physics. Um, it's a good one, so stick around. Um, but what I'd like to talk to you about in the meantime is turning your players into fans. Now, why do you want to turn your players into fans? You want to turn your players into fans so that you can get money off of your intellectual property outside the context of your game. Now, taking a look at the existing monetization items and options that are out there, I mean, this is stuff that we all know, right? You can sell your app at a premium. You can do an ad-supported app. You can make money with uh, freemium and in-app purchases. Um, Amazon will even pay you for every minute that every user is in the app. But all of these things happen inside your app. So what do we do as developers to make more money? Well, we do these things. We optimize all of the monetization mechanics that we've got inside of our games. We optimize in-app purchasing. Um, I've got some amazing tips on that we can talk about later if you want. Uh, we try to increase retention. We try to increase, increase engagement. But, I mean, you guys all know this. And actually, Casual Connect um, is full of amazing vendors who can help you do some really good work on these really important areas for monetization. But that's actually not what I want to talk to you guys about that. Uh, what I want to talk to you about is thinking outside the box or actually, according to the slide I have, thinking outside the coffee mug, but you get the point, right? Um, what I want you to do is I want you to think about how you make money on your intellectual property when nobody is actually in your app. And this is actually pretty important, because what you can do is you can reach customers you would not ordinarily reach, you can increase the number of customers that you get, and you can increase the engagement and revenue opportunities. And you do all of this by taking customers and turning them into fans and creating a fan base. Now, what is a fan base? Uh, think, of, think of a football game where you've got a handful of players on the field kicking the ball around, but the stadium is full of people they're not playing the game, they're watching a game, and almost every single one of those people has a jersey on that has someone's name on the back. Okay, maybe, you know, unless you're League of Legends, uh, you're not going to fill a stadium full of players and they're not going to have uh, your team's shirt on, but there is stuff that you can do today that will help you get more of your players and turn them into fans and start getting the benefits that a huge fan base can provide. So, I want to start with the first group uh, that compromises the fan base, influencers. Now, who are influencers? Influencers are that percentage of people who are going to help bring the total larger part of your total addressable market uh, into your game. Now, when I wrote my first game, I, uh, a little tiny trivia app, but I wanted users, right? So I went out there and the first thing I did was I started doing Facebook marketing. And I knew exactly who my target market was. So I made sure that I tuned that app and I hit my total addressable market, my target audience, and found that almost every dollar I spent was wasted. Um, I got an embarrassingly small number of people who actually downloaded the app and kind of a smaller number than that that actually kept using it for more than 14 days. So what was the problem? Was it that the advertising didn't work? Well, actually, no. The advertising works. The problem was I was advertising to the entire total addressable market, this entire curve. What I needed to do was target my marketing to influencers. Because, I mean, you guys play games. How many of you guys will download a game that only has two or three star ratings, uh, hasn't been out there very long, doesn't have a lot of downloads, right? Most of you probably aren't going to download those games. You guys are like with everybody else over here. But every once in a while, like maybe if you have a favorite genre of game and it looks kind of cool, you'll take a chance on it. Because you know what? You may be the tower defense god in your circle. And if you like tower defense games, you're going to try every new one that comes out because you're a tower defense influencer. Those are the people we want to contact and, and we want to market to. So those people, when they play your game, they're going to bring other people along with them. Now, influencers fall into two general categories. They fall into advocates, and they fall into professionals. Advocates are really fun. Advocates are people who are um, important in their circles. They influence their peer groups. They're the, you know, the god of tower defense game, if you will. One of my favorite examples 
of a really good influencer and advocate is a 12-year-old girl, actually. Um, let me talk to you a little bit about Club Penguin, if you don't know Club Penguin already. It's a massive multi-user online game for tweens or pre-tweens, where everyone gets to be this little adorable penguin, and they can build their own igloos, they can furnish it, they can get these little pets called puffles, they're adorable little things, trust me. Uh, they play games with their pets, they play games and have chats with other people. Um, it's really popular. And so this 12-year-old girl creates some pretty good art. Uh, she drew a picture of her penguin and, and the igloo that she had and a, her pet puffle, and she put it up on her Facebook page. So what do you think Disney's attorneys did? Cease and desist letter? That's what attorneys do, right? Hey, that's unlicensed uh, Disney property. You can't do that. Actually, Disney's attorneys were brilliant. What Disney's attorneys did was they said, listen, if it's okay with your parents, we want to take your art and we want to put it up on the Disney Club Penguin website. Heck yeah! So that 12-year-old goes to school and says to her friends, you know, my art is up on the Club Penguin website. <laughs> and so each one of her friends goes home that day, and they go and they look at that Club Penguin fan art website. And they look at that and they think, I could do better than that. And so they all go get Club Penguin accounts. They get penguins, they get igloos, they get puffles. They start creating their own art, and they start putting their own art up there. And now you've got an entire school full of 12-year-old girls playing Club Penguin because they can make art. They can get published on Disney's website. They're famous. They're rock stars in their own little community. How amazing is that? How would you like to have an entire school of 12-year-old girls or insert your own target market here, full of people super excited about contributing their contribution to your site. Okay, does your game have a website where people can contribute stuff they're proud of? Can they contribute screenshots of some amazing combo they've just done? Can they take a video of, or can they take anything that they've written or built or drawn that excites them about your game? Maybe, maybe not. Um, let's take a look at another kind of influencer. Um, uh, this is a, an entertainer, a professional. Now, professionals, they can be entertainers. Um, uh, they can do other things. But uh, actually, first, let me give you a, um, a quick path to engage. How do you turn a, a, a fan into uh, an influencer? One, give them a clear path to engage. A clear path to engage is really important. And when Vlambeer was developing their game, Nuclear Throne, that's exactly what they did, because they did the development on Twitch. And fans of their previous games went ahead and started watching their current game being developed. And when they launched their game, they already had 1,000 fans who had skin in the game. Because whether or not uh, JW actually took the suggestion of anyone here, you know what? They had skin in the game. And that made them super popular when they launched the game. They had their first thousand fans. Make sure that you have an opportunity to share, uh, your fans have an opportunity to share their art, uh, that they can participate in events, and give them a way to show their loyalty to you. Um, give them something that they, can, that they can hang on to, that they can use to say, hey, I'm a fan of this game. That's really important. Professionals, uh, both entertainers and journalists, are important. When PewDiePie reviewed Flappy Birds, uh, Google search results uh, for Flappy Bird went off the chart, and the rest is history. Now, PewDiePie charges you an arm and a leg to actually showcase any of your stuff right now. But you know what? There are thousands of broadcasters out there right now who want to be the next PewDiePie. How do you get on their radar screens, and how do you get the thousands of people who want to be PewDiePie to showcase your stuff? Make it easy for them. Make it really simple. Um, Congregate was up here yesterday talking about, I mean, they're a publisher, but it's the same issue. They get 200 mails a day of people saying, look at my game, it's great. Uh, when you're trying to get the attention of someone at GameSauce or maybe another journalist, the last thing they want to do is see a mail that starts with why your company works so hard. Okay, really, their audience, the audience of the journalists, the PewDiePie, they don't care how hard you work. They want to see an awesome game. So what you need to do to turn professionals into fans of your game is to help them appeal to their audience. 
They've got stakeholders that they need to keep happy if they want to be successful in their business. Tell them how your game is going to just delight their fans. Two, um, don't give them screenshots or video of login pages or menus. That's not super compelling. If your menu is the most exciting part of your game, you have other problems, guys, really. So show the part, I mean, the boss death on level five might be amazingly cool. So show that battle. And then make it easy for them to get the game. Put in a link in your mail they can click on, and it should take them to a place where they can download the APK, sign up for test flight, get an XE for their PC. Whatever device they have in front of them right now, you want to be able to get your game on that device with the least amount of friction possible. And don't just give them a retail build either. Give them a custom build that has a cheat code so they can put in a cheat code and get right to level five. Because you want to make it easy for streamers to show this to their entire audience. And if the boss battle at level five is really amazing, let them enter a cheat code so they don't have to play to level five to get there. Again, make it easy for these people to showcase their games and delight their audience and they'll help you out by promoting your game a whole bunch. The next thing a fan base can do is create content for you. My favorite kind of fan created content is the tutorial video. Hey, I just got this new character in the game and here's how you play the new character. It's amazing. If you equip them like this and send them against those kinds of enemies, you're invincible. This is great. It increases engagement and it increases customer retention because when you learn something new about a game you're playing, you want to try it out. I mean, maybe you've never thought about playing that kind of an archer character before, but this tutorial, man, you could be invincible for a couple of levels. You want to try that out. So you'll play the game longer and you'll have more engagement and interest in the game because somebody else created a video that taught them how to do something better. We have plenty of data about this with League of Legends. Um, it's true for your game too. The other kind of content that people make is how much fun is playing this game. Hey dude, I just got this magic user and he's amazing. He's got this sword and he can cut down bad guys by the dozen. He can leap across rivers and this cool magic wand, it melts mountains. Okay, that's the guy you want to have promoting your game and you want everyone to see his video. If you guys don't have your own YouTube channel where you can promote those videos that other people have created, you're missing out. You need to treat these people like absolute gold. When um, uh, Toit was up here during the keynote, he actually mentioned that word of mouth is better than, two times better than the most effective paid user acquisition you can get. And all of this people are gonna help you do if you just turn them into rock stars for helping you do it. So promote them. Um, uh, other kinds of content that you can create our levels, like Minecraft, every time a new Mockingjay movie came out, there was a Minecraft level for the battle arena. Um, trivia Crack, if you haven't downloaded it yet, download it now, best trivia game out there. Trivia Crack, Entomax, doesn't make questions anymore, their fan base does. And if their questions get voted up, hey man, they're rock stars. They're rock stars in their own world. So how do you turn your fan base into content creators? One, make it easy for them to create content, give them a place to put it, promote their content and acknowledge them publicly. If in a bulletin board, every time new content comes out, talk about it, tweet about new content, give them badges, give them icons, give them special skins um, or, other, or other things in your game that help promote them and make them feel special. These are your gold-plated fans, your gold-plated customers. Treat them as such. Turn them into rock stars and they'll help make your game super successful. Next thing. How do you drive additional revenue from a fan base? Well, first of all, you know, your Twitch and YouTube channel, if you don't have those, as soon as I'm finished talking, you guys need to go and create those because this is how you're gonna promote that content people have created, right? Well, people can subscribe to a Twitch stream. Twitch stream. You're not gonna make a ton of money right off the bat, but after you get bigger, it could become material. Same thing with advertising revenue on YouTube. Not so much when you're small, but it could become material once you get a little bit bigger. The real opportunity is making money on your intellectual property because you've got super fans. Um, again, we've got Cut the Rope, My Singing Monster. Yeah, there's even a Twitter cookie cutter up on the Amazon website. Really? A Twitter cookie cutter? But people buy the thing. 
People love Twitter. They buy, they make Twitter cookies. Um, Evernote, everyone knows Evernote is a great digital note-taking tool, but not all notes are taken digitally, so Evernote now has a branded name of notebooks and uh, sticky notes with 3M. Okay, brilliant. Now, truth be told, I know not many of you got into the game-making business so that you could import a lot of product, store it in your apartment, and then start fulfilling orders, right? No one wants to do that. But that's where Amazon comes in. We have a new program called Merch by Amazon, and if you take your game art and you upload it to Amazon, we'll make t-shirts available. You'll get a URL that takes you to a detailed page, just like any other product sold on Amazon, and people can buy your shirt. They can, uh, basically, you pick the price that you want to sell the shirt for. We take out the cost of printing and selling and, and shipping the shirt, and anything between our cost and the price you set, we just send to you. So there's no cost out of your pocket to get your own t-shirts. And this is, this is really cool because think about people who are big fans of other events. Like if you, the guy who finishes a Boston Marathon, right? Okay, the race is over. The game is done. But what does he do? Goes out and buys a t-shirt. I finished the Boston Marathon. And he proud. he's proud to wear that around because, man, he did something that's really hard. Almost as hard as beating the boss on level 20. Okay. So a guy beats the boss on level 20, seriously hard. Tell him he can get the shirt. I beat the boss on level 20. He might do that because that's a seriously cool accomplishment. And he's wearing that around and people are going, dude, what is on your shirt? That's a mess. Dude, that's what's left of the level 20 boss after I got through with him. Level, what game? And now there's this conversation where they're talking about your game and your game isn't even open. It's not even out of his pocket. His phone is still in his pocket and they're talking about your game. This is, again, that thing that's two times more effective than any user acquisition you can purchase is that word of mouth, uh, word of mouth advertising. And this is kind of how you start getting it. So quick recap on how you guys are going to make more money outside of your game. First thing I want you to do is I want you to build influencers uh, to get additional players. Influencers, give them a place to express how much excitement they're having with your game. Uh, give them ways to, to communicate with their fans and communicate with them on a regular basis. Um, uh, Apptentive actually did a study and found out that developers who communicate with their players have three times better retention uh, at, at uh, one month than developers who don't communicate with their players. So absolutely do that. Second thing I want you to do, I want you to build content, uh, build mechanisms so that your content creators can help you increase retention. So people who make uh, how-to videos, people who make I'm having fun videos, make sure you feature them on your YouTube site or your Twitch channel. Make sure you have links to their stuff all over. It's absolutely incredible incredibly important that you do this and turn them into rock stars. Last thing I want you to do is generate additional tick, income tick. off of your intellectual property. You're going to do this by getting subscription revenue from Twitch, ad revenue from YouTube, and by selling t-shirts through Merch by Amazon. And these three things are going to help you take tick. that intellectual property you've worked to create, and it's going to help you monetize that without your game ever having to be open. Guys, it's been a pleasure talking to you. It's a great conversation to have. If you want to keep chatting about this, I'll be available over by meeting area one after the presentation, or you can uh, ping me on Twitter at Mike F. Hines. I've had a great time talking to you about this. Thank you very much.